Hello everyone, a very good evening. This is Shriyal Sethumadhuan, the executive editor of Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal in India. And I am delighted to welcome you all for the Tuesday Sundowners series with me. As most of you would be aware and most of you have been joining me on this every week, uh, the Tuesday Sundowner series is uh, something that I introduced a couple of weeks ago and every Tuesday I have an industry expert or an artist to join me in the evening and we have a chat. Uh, a, to know the artist a little more closer, to know their journey, uh, to know what made them successful in the space they are in. And uh, of course, we try to get a lot of business tips and a lot of suggestions from them that could, you know, help the entire beauty industry be together and survive in these tough times. Uh, so, you all have also equally been a part of, uh, you know, these Tuesday Sundowner series with me. Uh, you all have been very supportive, you all have been very interactive through the chat box, like you see the comment box below. So, continue doing that, send in your questions for the artist who joins me and we would be happy to have it all discussed. Uh, so, today I have uh, Ms. Zorain Khalili joining me from Bangalore. Uh, I think she is already in here. So, before I talk anything about her more, let me add her into this live immediately. To join me in and Zorain should be with me. Uh, yes, so um, Zurain is a makeup artist and uh, founder of Zurain Studios. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Shreyal. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining me so good evening and thank you for all your time. It's my pleasure, my love. Thank you for having me here. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. I hope my voice is clear for you because I can hear some disturbance. Uh, it's quite clear for me. It's quite clear. Am I it's audible? clear, right? Yes, yes, you're perfectly audible. I could hear some disturbance, but as long as I'm clear to you, I can ignore all of it. <laughs> okay, great. So, I was uh, telling all my viewers that uh, Ms. Zorain has joined me for the Tuesday Sundowner series, where every Tuesday evening I indulge in a fireside chat with an industry artist to know them a little more closer and to discuss their perspectives on the current business scenario in the industry. Uh, so, uh, a few more words about Ms. Zorain before I take this discussion forward. She is a makeup artist and the founder of Zorain Studios in Bangalore, an internationally trained makeup artist and trainer with over 20 years of experience in the industry, catering to celebrities, fashion, film and brides. Her specializations lie in uh, bridal makeup, hair styling, nail art, hair refixing and lash extension and uh, I'm so glad to have her join me in today. Okay, I see one of the viewers saying there's an echo in my voice. Can someone just confirm that for me? Is there still an echo? Is my voice better? Wait, I'll just... Yeah. Is it better now? Uh, Ms. Zorin, can you feel the echo when I'm speaking? No, I, I think I, I have you quite clear. You have it clear, right? Okay. So, uh, so what we'll do is we'll begin with something that I call a quick rapid fire round. Okay, let me just try without my... <laughs> I'm all good. Yeah, is this fine? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we'll begin with a rapid fire round that I uh, normally do and uh, oh my viewers are saying that there's still some disturbance what is wrong okay wait let's... I don't have this okay yes yeah, super fine thank you for that Mandara I'm going to go ahead with this uh, so I think as long as you all can hear uh, Ms. Zorin clearly that's uh, a thumbs up for me so yes so uh, I normally start with this rapid fire round I have a few questions uh, that would help me and the viewers know you a little more closely so I'm going to start with that and of course for my viewers like I said look at the comment box on your screen and send in your questions as well we would be happy to have them discussed and answer so um, uh, Zoran to begin with what do you love most about being a makeup artist My most favorite question. I think the biggest thing, the, the thing that I love about what I do is uh, one is the fact that you can transform people, make them look beautiful and basically an enhanced them 
everyone's beautiful, but when you can enhance them further, I think that's what that's what's rewarding. And what's more rewarding than being in a field? You get paid for it, but you love what you do. You, your your passion becomes a part of your earning. I think it's fabulous. Nice. Um, uh, I am sure you would have been an inspiration to many, but who has been your inspiration? Um, looking back, uh, when I was really, really young, I think um, there's an artist called Kevin Acoin. Uh, wrote some beautiful books, which, um, like, I think one of my aunts brought down to me when I was very, very young, and I was super impressed. So I would definitely say Kevin Acoin is a big, big inspiration for me. Nice. Uh, now this might be a tricky one, of course, uh, taking your years of experience. But uh, the first makeup product you ever brought? Hmm. It has to be the lipstick. So I think, um, as every child does, dig into their mother's lipsticks and uh, try and get a product on. I think um, I was all of thirteen when my. Uh, Finally, after I don't know how many years, because back then there were like no lipstick, no this, but my mom got me a lipstick at the age of 13. So I think that was my prized possession for a long, long time. Interesting. I think it's, uh, this would be something that most of us could relate to, uh, the lipstick that we like. And I think it's the, always the first one is our mothers. That's the most exciting one for us. True. <laughs> totally with you on that. One challenge that you face as a celebrity makeup artist? Hmm, good one. Challenges many. Um, okay, on the lighter note, I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, I would think that I face is the fact of staying maintained. So as in keeping the space on, um, having makeup on because people associate you, like it's like wearing your profession on your face. So that's a pressure to always have this done up face but yeah that's that's a challenge i think that we all face as uh, celebrity artists that we have to keep our persona always on uh, but on a more serious note i think uh, being a celebrity artist is um, somewhere down even a responsibility to inspire people like the new entries into this world of makeup which is a beautiful world so i think somewhere down the pressure is always to make sure that you know you can be someone that they can look up to and you can inspire. So constantly upgrading my own skills maybe so that, you know, I can make sure that, you know, I can continue to inspire them. Nice. Uh, Major Aditi is here. In fact, I also know her. Hello, Major Aditi. And she Hello. says that you are beautiful inside out. I can't agree more on that. <laughs> Thank you, Major. I know you, you're just every time kind with your words. Thank you so much. Okay, going to my next question. Uh, one celebrity that you have not styled yet and you would love to? Mm, I think that would be Vidya Balan. Uh, I just love her versatility in herself. So uh, I would think doing makeup just once on her would be injustice. I would like to bring out so many sides of her and I would definitely love to do her makeup. Definitely. Interesting. Uh, before I go to my next question, I have one question here in the comments again from Major Aditi. That how do you stay grounded being a celebrity artist? Hmm. Every day is a new day. But I think the biggest thing is um, I don't think there's an end to learning. So uh, as big as we can grow, I always feel there's a thirst in me for learning and I always feel I'm still a student. So I guess I haven't reached enough, so I think I still need to keep growing every day, and I I think that that helps me stay really, really grounded. Nice, nice. Shilam Bajaj says that Doreen is a great teacher. She teaches makeup like science. Wow, that's nice. I think we should discuss training as well as part of today's session. It's going to be a great uh, time to get some insights from you. So with that, I go to my next rapid fire question. Uh, what would you keep in mind when creating the first thing that you keep in mind when creating a look for a client or a celebrity? I think the first thing that comes into the mind is um, what is their need? It's about definitely understanding what's the purpose that they have me there for. 
uh, and then obviously it's about uh, giving them their requirement uh, to the utmost uh, beautifully executed way. I think nice. Yeah. Nice. I think I think this is an important approach and tip for any professional in this industry when it comes to approach, approaching your clients. So a very good point in there. Uh, one thing that you would never tell the client. Um, no, I would never say no. So uh, a lot of clients come with a lot of things that they um, they think that is good for them. Sometimes it is good for them actually. And uh, or they may ask for requests which seem very out of the box. But I think never say no is my attitude. Uh, sometimes when they ask me for some things that um, I know it's not going to suit, I still don't say no. So I think I would either convince them. If they don't get convinced, I'll confuse them. If they still don't go with it, then I'll just listen to them. So I will give in. So but have you faced, how often do you face such situations in your day to day? Um, most often than not, people are very kind. I think, I think God's blessed me with very, very nice people around me. Uh, my clientele is really sweet. So touch wood, touch wood. Uh, not too many times, but there are a lot of times where they don't understand, um, like, like Sheila even mentioned, it's a science. You have to understand the technique. So there are certain right. techniques that you need to execute even to achieve what they want, you know, in the most amazing way. But sometimes they don't see it that way because a lot of it is on YouTube. So they, they see something and they think it can be adapted to their face. But yeah, it has to be adapted to their face. It just can't be a replica. So that's the time I think we have a bit of a challenge to make sure that, you know, we get the right things done. Right. Uh, your signature look. Tell us about your signature. <laughs> it's something that I have christened to say um, is like a reverse swish. Um, I know it has no meaning in the makeup directory. Uh, but anyways, uh, what it is about is about highlighting the eyelids and taking color above. <coughs> Sorry. So the thing that actually why I like it is it suits everyone. Everyone can do with a little bit more lid space. Some may have small lid space, big lid space. You don't mind the lid space showing because that brings out, like I think the shape of the eye, the beauty of the eye comes out when your lid space is there. So if you notice, it's a bit of color on the top, but the top of the eyelid space is quite clean. Right, right. and it looks beautiful. Uh, one beauty product that you can't live without? Hmm. Can I be greedy? <laughs> okay, make it two. <laughs> okay. okay, so I guess, um, like I said, that 13-year-old hasn't died in me. So um, my lipstick still remains a very big part of me. I think it's one thing that I can put on and my husband says, ah, now you look brighter. And of course, my mascara. So I think that can open up the eye and just open up the world me. Interesting. Before I go to my next question, I have a couple of my viewers asking me, am I going to save this live? So yes, this live will definitely be saved and it's going to be available on the Pro Beauty India page in the IGTV section. So you could have it there in case for any reason you've missed the beginning or you would have to leave early. So uh, from there, I go to my next question. Um, any makeup trend that you wish to stop? Hmm. Uh, for sure, definitely, definitely, definitely. One thing that I um, would want to at least reduce, if not anything else, is the over excessive heavy foundation look and uh, the overly done YouTube contour and highlight. So uh, basically, I think um, these are trends that uh, normally what happens is it looks nice on like a camera. But when uh, it influences a lot of people to actually uh, do it, it doesn't look really nice face to face. It's, it's very, very intense. So when uh, the person is so, uh, sometimes there are a lot of people watching. So there is someone who's maybe really, you know, nascent to makeup and thinks that it's the greatest thing to do. But at the end, it turns out to be quite a bummer and contouring is not easy. So uh, I think it's an overhyped thing, definitely. 
and i think maybe this is the times also when people are more exposed to videos so many youtubes i think reels and everything happening so this is definitely a point uh, to keep in mind uh what beauty trend do you think should come back this year since i don't want that trend then i want the trend back of having very breathable skin it's fine to have like i leave a little bit of my dark circles uh, on it's fine to have a little bit of you show through you can look drop dead gorgeous glamorous everything but a little bit of you i think has to be there so i think um it has to be going back to uh, bringing the personality out that's something that i would think that we all should focus on so uh, not just because someone's got glitter on or someone's got a heavy liner on i think the trend should come back of um, you know people creating something that they are comfortable in mm. Mm. nice um i have geeta vijay makeovers asking if we can give some suggestion for beginners so geeta stay with us uh this will come in the latter part of our discussion so stay with us we'll definitely have that answered for you and um, yes oh in fact i think it's right here on my list your message to aspiring makeup artist i think geeta just had geeta very was, good timing geeta has some <laughs> karmic connection to us great yeah. <laughs> so geeta this one is for you and for everyone who is aspiring to be a makeup artist um the first things first um makeup is an art but is a science so uh if you want to be just ex- like extraordinary in the art and the science you have to understand that science technique is the most important thing so once you understand the technique then your products the colors the the client space everything talks back to you you can actually have a conversation with all your tools and your client space that you're working with it's about master the technique and you will definitely be there the other thing i'm sorry i'm just going to quickly add the fact that yes, um, it has a lot of glamour to it i agree there's a lot uh lots of glamour lots of um, fame name everything money everything but remember with all this comes responsibility i think it is a big profession with responsibility sometimes you need to miss your children's birthdays sometimes you need to miss um, it could be anything it could you could be working on your own birthday you could be working on a day that you're really really down and dusted but at the end of it commitment is very high in this field so i think um yeah it's it's a fabulous field to be in please go ahead i don't think i've i could have any done anything else different but uh, yeah i think it's a fabulous field to be in go for it nice so geeta i hope that uh, you know gives you the kind of insight you were looking forward to uh, my last rapid fire question now this comes more out of a space of curiosity okay from my end if not a makeup artist what would you have been <laughs> uh, like i just said actually my world rotates around what i do and i would love it but i think if i was pushed to do something else it would be interior designing i think the fact of having like um aesthetics colors uh, dimension you know just things like this intrigue me a lot so if i wasn't doing this yeah i would do interiors i still do not that i don't so i like to do up my studio right. up my house i like to do up uh, places but yeah makeup is my first love and will always be you will not believe zorin uh, i have asked this question to almost every makeup artist who joined me live and uh, you will not believe most of the time actually i think almost all the times maybe except for one uh, they all have said interior designer if We not a makeup artist the same like they say na ek hi kapde ke whatever whatever pieces so i think we all come from there i think what is very very similar to the field is enhancing beautifying uh, you know taking something that is already there existing but just bringing out the beauty in it i think it's very closely related and i don't think we can move too far we love our life right 
right right so uzma who's with us right now as our viewer she's asking that nowadays literally everyone wants to become a makeup artist what do you have to say about this um there was a time where everyone wanted to become a doctor but we still had dearth of doctors um the only fields were doctors and engineers but we never ran out of them don't worry we won't run out of makeup artists there will be shift in trends definitely there will be trends where uh, you know um, stand alone artists or your freelance artists will be uh, maybe supreme in some markets in some markets you can go back and join the mainstream corporate but remember um with the number of i don't i can't even count the number of billion weddings that we have in india in a year so go for it you know what if if it's not wedding it's corporate if it's not corporate you can get into film if it's not film there are multiple lines there's education that you can take so um find your niche that's what i would say find your niche find something that makes you really really want to get up every day and go um don't worry there's still a lot of space for a lot of artists nice right uh, so now uh, this comes brings me to the end of my rapid fire questions now i'm going to be discussing a couple of things that you know are related to the current scenario a few trends of course we see the bridal season coming soon for us so we'll discuss a little bit of that a uh, more of a sensitive topic like being environment friendly how can makeup artists take the lead in this area as well uh, and training is going to be another aspect and uh, of course uh, some of your specialization so again for all my viewers uh, you if you are a beginner you're facing your own challenges in this industry uh, we have ms zorain here with us please do ask your questions the comment section is still there at the bottom of your screen and i would be happy to take them for you so uh, zorain to begin with a no brainer uh, we know how tough the current times have been for us uh, there's been a lot of stress there's been a lot of anxiety industries have been affected professions have been affected how have these pandemic months been for you and what have your learnings been in these months hmm um touchy topic obviously i think there's no industry that was left uh hurt or unhurt rather or not been affected by this but i think the beauty industry somewhere down the line um we are a very touch and feel industry so we are straight in the face of a client so i think somewhere down the line um we were also very badly affected but having said that i think the past two years have been a good amount of learning a good amount of um i think beautiful lessons that we have learned if we actually look back to the first time uh, the pandemic broke out uh, it took us all by storm it took us by shock a lot of us lost a lot of business especially when it came to bridals and things like that uh, but if you realize the beauty of that one particular period was i don't know if everyone would agree with me but i saw a lot of exchange of knowledge people willing to share people willing to learn so i think it gave people some time out to even actually a lot of aspirants who love makeup got an opportunity to actually learn a lot of us did free sessions online we we learned from other artists sometimes as an artist you know you're so stuck in your own world it's um it's just nice to actually go out there and see what others are also doing you know there are so many talented people on this earth and a lot of talented makeup artists all over in india abroad so it was a great time to actually revisit what is happening around and uh, think tough definitely i wouldn't say there were a lot of people who just learned makeup and they had invested a lot of money and obviously there was no way of getting returns but i guess uh look at the positive side of it there was definitely an upgrade in knowledge which to me is i think supreme and uh then i think moving on we did actually bounce back as an industry remember beauty is very close to every lady's heart we can't stay away from it we want that little pampering we want that little bit of you know a uh, feel good factor that we get with a little bit of makeup or even doing our lashes nails whatever it could be so even the fact that you know uh, some of us did become a little manly big brows long hair <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah 
salons had to start getting back into business. So uh, a lot of them did learn how to manage, you know, upper lips and things like that by online things. But like I said, learning was great. But we did bounce back as a beauty industry in as in. And I think even for me, from my side as well, we came back. A lot of the brides who had postponed their weddings, we had such a packed December. I don't think we had the time to breathe. So it was a great comeback. We were really superbly fine. I think what really took a lot of moral down was the second hit. The second hit yes. was where actually, uh, more than anything, I think the morale of people were down. Lost a lot of lives. Yes. Lost a lot of known people. A lot of people from the makeup world. A lot of people. So when so many people go, I think the morale goes down. Um, but having said that, we're just about off that phase we're looking forward to a big comeback again. I think everybody should remember again, like how those brides postponed, how people postpone their beauty therapies. They will be back. So don't worry. It's only a passing phase. We should thank God that we're all alive, happy, still have yes. makeup on. Let's go for it. That's all I would say. Yes. And how about someone who wants to start their career? So we have a uh, set up who's asked this question, that in this situation, how can we start a career in this industry? Any tips, advice that you would have over here? Sure. So basically, um, like I say, this is an industry um, right now with the kind of uh, social media access that we have. It's much more easier than before. So if I took 20 years or to come to this level, I know of people who've taken one year, two years, three years to just come out there. I think what's very important is being a makeup artist, but also being socially uh, present on media platforms. You must, must, must make that an effort to showcase. Now, the more the people see you, the more they will hire you, the more they will take you on board. Uh, Urban Clap and companies still take people on board um, so they can give you a great platform to start off with. But um, I think if you have already done a professional thing, go ahead, use this time, study more, learn more. There's a lot of it online, but showcase a lot of it through social media platforms. I think that's one of the biggest key things. And of course, join in with, uh, there are multiple groups, there are beauty groups that uh, can, you know, uh, give you leads, promote things, but most of it is all socially online. So I would say definitely, definitely pick that phone and get yourself seen. Nice. Uh, I'm sure this is going to help a lot of uh, the beginners and the ones who are looking forward to, you know, getting into this profession. I have known that, you know, your uh, signature style of makeup is something that is popularly known as the Indo-Arab style of makeup that you create. Uh, I think no one would have really heard this and it's truly a signature to you. Please tell us more about this and what inspired you to, you know, kind of uh, specialize yourself in this kind of makeup. Okay. Never asked, never had anyone ask me this question, but I think I love this question. It's actually something that's very close to the heart. Um, makeup I did from a very young age, but the exposure to the Arab world of makeup came after I got married. So I moved to the Middle East and um, it was mesmerizing to see their eyes. Now in the Middle East, obviously I was in a more interior part of Oman. So a lot of the eyes would show. And the eyes were done so beautifully well, you know, and um, that really inspired me. So I went ahead to understand the kind of structure that it creates, the Arabic style. It kind of elongates your eye. It's, it's just very beautiful. So uh, what happens is there is a lot of use of um, a slight amount more of carbon, like dark black and things like that. But at the end of it, what it brings out is a lot of the eye color of an individual. So it was something that really floored me and I loved, loved my experiences there. When I came back to India, the first thing we all know is the Indian eyes. You've got beautiful eyes too, dear. And likewise, <laughs> millions, millions. I think the Indians have the most beautiful set of eyes. And um, all we do is maybe just a kajal. So why not bring it back here 
yeah <laughs> a lot of people so um i think um that's where you know i wanted to bring it here to enhance the beautiful indian eyes another trick that actually i have learned from this entire thing is um we indian women don't like to look a little more duskier than we are and contouring does that to you so this is a kind yeah. of like a cheat methodology where you can um you know keep the face slightly more fuller it's fine by elongating the eye so a lot of times what happens is if your eye is small and you've kind of contoured over here you'll contour but the eye is still small but if you increase the eye size it tends to automatically contour your face a bit so that's where i thought it worked beautifully in the indian market where we lengthen the eye give it that structure get people to look into the eye and obviously then your contouring comes down and we indian women can still look fair up <laughs> if i may say i think it's an amazing and a very inspiring technique to look forward to do you teach it as as part of your training courses as well if at all you yes definitely we have something that we call as basic structure uh basic structure is something that we do on the eye and um i don't think it's a part of anyone's curriculum it's something that i created to actually um it's a simple like a few step methodology to create the base length and then post that you can do whatever eyes a canvas so ah interesting i and your these trainings are in bangalore yes they are in bangalore there are trainings so, online as well and okay we are i was coming to that in bangalore as well So for all my viewers this is something if you want to specialize then you know where you have to go right now please <laughs> great i'll just take a couple of questions so we have one question from uh, geeta again that can you suggest the best makeup book geeta like i said kevin coin has been a big inspiration get his books face forward um Uh, there's there's amazing amount of books that you will get on Kevin Coin. Um, I think they're very basic and simple. Uh, apart from that, um, you could actually learn a lot from the online tutorials that actually happen. So um, one thing is reading about it, and one thing is seeing. So I would say do a collaboration of both. Uh, if you would want, I could send in a list of uh, recommended books and. Yeah, maybe just message, and then we could have you will have like an entire list because it, the list is exhaustive. Wow, that would be great. So, uh, Gita, I think you can definitely DM uh, Ms. Zoran on her Instagram page, and I'm sure she would be happy to respond to you. Uh, we also have Major Aditi wanting to know that how does one find the right foundation in comparison to their skin tone? Um, so. good question and i think it's a question on everyone's mind uh the thing is when you talk about foundation it's about getting the foundation to look like your skin not lighter you can brighten if you would wish like everybody does brightening is basically when you color correct it's a little more technical but uh how you would choose your right foundation is the fact that um i'll give you two tricks one is get to an expert get them to give it to you because every counter normally does have but if when you are traveling there's a lot of times we travel and we want to pick up and we pick up the wrong shade the best thing to do is to test the product and i would test the product here so when you put the product it should kind of get into the skin without like having to look like a separate color if it looks lighter do not pick the color because the tendency right now yes you will feel that you will look fairer but actually what would happen over a period of time we we call it oxidization so oxidization will take place and you will tend to look darker than your original color so and don't go darker of course because obviously you would deepen out so just test a bit over here and then you should have if it's a match great the other thing is to understand what kind of formula you would want the safest formula for most people to do is a liquid foundation most of them are silicon based very easy to blend on your skin uh, the thicker more emollient based ones are more difficult so leave it for the professionals to sometime uh, manipulate with but liquid foundations are really really good um the only word of caution is 
most often than not, we try to use one foundation everywhere, but we do tend to have different coloration on our skin. Our neck could be sometimes deeper than our face. So when you have a neck versus a face, you could choose which one you want to mimic. Take this down or take this up, one. And the other thing is, if you do have pigmentation, please try and invest in a concealer as well. You'd need two products, one a concealer and one a foundation. Once you've concealed the area, your foundation is good to go all over. But if you took only your foundation all over, there, on patches that are darker, you will tend to have grayness. And on patches which are lighter, you will tend to have it look your skin tone. So you're going to have a mismatch anyways. So a concealer and a foundation should work perfect. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm making so many mental notes too. <laughs> And that's why I always thank my viewers and I always tell them, let the questions keep coming in because it's just going to help all of us watching this. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. That was a beautiful question. Yes, it was indeed. Uh, you did mention how last year in December, the bridal season worked really well. And, you know, that was one time that you all had it all packed. Uh, how do you see the bridal makeup trends coming along this year? Um, so... Having looked at what happened in the past as well, um, it's going to be my favorite year again. It's a year of eyes again for one more year uh, because the masks are not gone for some more time. And uh, with the current scenario, I think um, we have no choice. Like the first pandemic, after the first session, we did have brides get off the mask. But now they're still wearing the mask because it's still a little more risky at times. So I think it's going to be, again, eyes, eyes, and a lot more eyes um, because masks are on. Uh, over and above that, um, I think the skin, as usual, is more mattish because uh, you don't want it transferring onto your mask and looking all ugly. And then, uh, you know, um, the weddings have come down in the number of people attending. So... One of the biggest trends I think that we've seen is people now celebrating themselves. So even if it is eye makeup, it's not, it's not over the top. It's not always glitter. It's not always glamour. It's about, uh, you know, they're keeping it. They're just making themselves look, look beautiful, just beautiful. And I think that is fabulous. Am I losing you there? I think I just lost you for a bit. Was that? Um, so didn't we not able to hear you? I think there was some uh, disturbance yeah, in your network. For a bit over there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, the the uh, video is a little blurred, but I can hear you. So if you can just repeat what you said in the uh, in the last ten seconds. Okay. So can you see me and hear me now? Yes. Better. Okay. Great. So basically, what I was saying was yes, it's going to be about eyes. Um, some will go dramatic. Some will go elaborate but there will be some that will just want to enhance just like a basic beauty of themselves. Remember, uh, but makeup artists, don't worry, you will still be hired because whatever said and done, it's the most, I think it's the most special day of a uh, woman's life. I think it's such a memorable life. What goes down is pictures. Remember your kids didn't attend your wedding. They're going to see you in pictures. So when you want to look good, you're definitely going to get someone to make you look good. So um, don't worry. Makeup will be done. So for all those aspiring artists, hold yourself there. Just remember, this season, it's about giving the bride what she wants. Make sure that you're there for her. More supportive, rather. I think this season, what demands... Uh, from a makeup artist is more of your nature and your patience than your skill. So be there and uh, just be there for her. But trend wise, remember, it is going to be still more eye centric. So play with those eyes or give them something nice and subtle so that they are just comfortable with the people that they have around them. Yes. And again, for all my viewers, if you all want to know anything more uh, about Mizorian's course that she teaches, uh, you could DM her on her Instagram page and she would be happy to give you more updates over there. 
Uh, now, Ms. Zurin, you would be aware we introduced the professional beauty and hairdressers journal magazine in December 2020. In fact, you were also featured in our launch edition where uh, I had interacted with you on the bridal makeup trend. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for that. I think after that time, uh, this is my first. It's always been a privilege. I think professional beauty India is a fabulous platform. If uh, most of you over there like beauty, get on to it because i think it gives an opportunity to bring talent on one platform it's fabulous uh from whatever the efforts i have seen you all do over the years i love the way you bring the community together i love the way you help people showcase their talent give people vision ahead i uh, i can't thank you all enough fabulous 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 effort by all Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it only motivates us to do more. The year has been tough for us as well. We too, like, you know, shifted gears from uh, getting more digital, doing more lives. But uh, it's uh, amazing for us. Our reward is when we see the industry benefiting out of all our efforts. So thank you so much for those kind words. And of course, this wouldn't be possible. uh you know when if we didn't get support from artists like you in you know everything that we're doing we launched a magazine the pandemic year that speaks a lot for you know all the support that we've got from the industry so well, thank you so much thank you so our recent edition focused on sustainability uh, we also did a campaign on sustainability matters in fact for all my viewers if the copy is available for uh, your free download it's on the bio of pro beauty india page so do go and download your free copy of the magazine if you haven't yet on sustainability matters so uh, zurin i wanted to understand from you that you know with the increasing awareness about being sustainable and eco conscious um, i often ask this to you know salon owners hair stylist and uh, the entire industry even brands for that matter uh, how can makeup artists lead the zero waste beauty revolution So, like you said, it's a revolution by the entire beauty industry, and uh, we being also a big part of it. I think definitely we have a big part to play. I think um, first off, I think one of the easiest ways. Let me give you the easiest ways to actually doing this is uh, my first suggestion would be is develop an ethical kit. So we all okay. use our biggest tools are our makeup. and what we use so i would say go ethical on your kit the first things first is what do we buy so uh, when i say what do we buy i mean um it's just basically there are multiple brands out there remember the makeup industry or the beauty industry is just part of many people's lives okay and a lot of these people influence us so what we buy is extremely important because there are brands out there that take that extra effort to actually go out and you know get cruelty free products it's about the ethos of these brands so pick brands that respect mother earth pick brands that are more organic um when i say organic i definitely uh, i'm quite sure that we all know that at the end of it in makeup we still have limitations like you could get skin care very easily that is more organic uh you have fabulous brands you have some fabulous india brands uh the indian brands actually when you think organic i love to first think india because i think we're super organic on what we like to do so there are a lot of brands available locally that really go out there make a big effort to actually create lineups which are very very eco friendly so i would say when you're choosing your skin care try getting to brands like that when it comes to makeup cruelty free no animal testing it's important it's important that we also chip in a bit over there so look at brands with products that you can actually have like a conscience to so that's number 1 the second thing is how do you use these products so when we're talking about uh definitely we have a big big uh social moral responsibility on the clients that we use these products on so definitely making sure that we are safe with the products that we use there is a um, good amount of you know depot your products make sure that you know uh, your hygiene standards are kept really really high 
um, that's how you could maintain it, of course, to your clients. But what's also important is coming back to that kit, you're going to have multiple brands come out with new products every day. And the tendency of an artist is, oh, that's new. I want that. I want that. So what I would really, really um, like request rather than anything else is try and use your product fully before you go to another product. So just don't buy multiple products. Remember, at the end of it, you're going to have that one favorite and you're always going to land up using that one favorite and the other product is going to expire and die in your kit. And then it goes back to Mother Earth, thrown away in a form that we don't know that how it's going to affect. So go for it. Keep, keep Mother Earth always in mind. Keep Keep the fact that it's your product. It's like a baby. To me, my products are my babies. I, having said that, I do indulge. I wouldn't want to be uh, totally, totally uh, like saying that, no, no, I don't. I do indulge, but I do like to make sure that I finish my products before I move on to another, especially with your skincare and products that die out really soon, like eyeshadows and stuff like that. Anything that's non-moisture-based, um, has a longer uh, shelf life. So what happens is you can actually keep those products for a longer period of time. So if you sometimes feel that urge, go ahead, buy a few more eyeshadows, it's quite fine. But if you don't, then go ahead and get products like the moisture-based products, don't over invest in them. That would be my second. And the third part I would say is disposal. So there are a lot of conscious brands as well. Mac has one uh, great initiative where they say back to Mac, take your products and give it back to them. You know, they recycle the plastic. Yes. Likewise, uh, if you can't find a, a brand that does it, not every brand does it, but we as a community of makeup artists, I think once we're done with products, there are people who take in that plastic and recycle it. So try and find people like this. Try and get thing or at least make sure that you when you throw it you don't throw it as one off pieces into the bin put it together so that you can actually go ahead and dispose it off right remember so buy a right product from a brand that has a slight more ethical approach slight more something that's more organic would work makeup will still take time we're hoping we get there a lot of lipsticks are coming up which are organic but a lot of the other products like the eyeshadows dimethicon silicon there's things there's so many things that are not really organic and they can't be replaced so till then we shall wait on those but go ahead for skincare make sure that your products that you use finish the products before you uh, can get your next one open dispose them off properly and I think that's something that we can do back. Currently with the pandemic, I think one thing that I'd like to touch on is the fact that we've been using a lot of, um, how do I say, a lot of uh, gloves, a lot of even, you know, those, uh, cloth aprons. So basically what happens is when you're using uh, a lot of the gloves. Now, remember gloves, uh, a lot of people tend to reuse them which is great, but not great. So remember it's plastic. Some of them are non-biodegradable. Uh, they do harbor some sort of infection in it. So um, I would say washing of hands is the safest, easiest, and most simplest way to actually keep the environment clean. So definitely, definitely my sincere plea to you is wash your hands more often rather than using a lot more gloves. Uh, when it comes to your aprons, yes, we do wear aprons, recyclable aprons, but a lot of us wear disposable aprons. There was a time that we would wear a lot of them. But remember, where do all this waste go? A lot of them can't be recycled. So remember, we do have a great bath. We wear our clothing. Try wearing more cotton-based clothes, which is a little less um, attractive to viruses and things like that. They're more breathable fabrics. And come back have a bath, change, and you should be all safe and fine. So trust me, try. I understand safety first, but at the same time, let's be conscious about Mother Earth. I think you've 
amazingly shared such relevant points and like you rightly mentioned it's just about being a little more conscious in the beginning about these steps until they become a habit because once things become a habit we just do it like you wake up from your sleep or you're in your sleep you can do it so i think sustainability for this industry is more like a conscious effort that is required in the beginning um and i hope uh, that with us also now taking this in view whether every edition every month we trying to you know talk more about sustainability i hope we together are able to bring about uh, this change and be more polite to mother earth in the times to come Definitely. Thank you so much. So Zorin, we have like last five minutes uh, for this live, and uh, of course, we did discuss the current times and how it has been. Uh, on a concluding note, amid the pandemic, uh, what, in your opinion, would be the turnaround point for this industry's revival? Like it feels like for the longest time, survival has been the word, you know. But uh, do you see that turnaround time coming soon when you know the focus is going to be on this revival, and what is it going to take for that time? i love the way you put it as survival to revival um and it's definitely uh, i think the biggest thing is as humans the biggest tool that we have is to be optimistic and to look at the bright uh, side of this we are going to be back with the bank for sure and i think one of the turning points that we're looking at is right now according to me vaccination so yeah. if you realize there's a lot of pressure on it there's a lot of push on it yes there could be people who may not think it's right or not right that i'm not going to get into that but the thing is with vaccination a lot of clients have already started asking us are your people vaccinated uh because from what data has to tell us um if you are vaccinated with both your vaccines both your doses then uh you tend not to be a carrier so i think once that happens there's a little more confidence boost that your clients will have and you will also have because when you send out a team or when you go out you do definitely it's like a protective shield so i would definitely definitely say i think one of the focuses that uh, i would keep in mind is to make sure that all our people are vaccinated so that they are protected and once people are more confident of actually getting out there being there it's not going to take time trust me we've been open for a day or two now and we've already seen a change so all i can say is all the best to each one of us uh we're definitely going to be great thank you thank you so much this has been an amazing discussion and i just feel that i could have kept talking to you uh, because i think even my viewers were like totally into this conversation but uh, unfortunately instagram gives us a time limit and they get the live off so we need to end in 60 minutes but thank you so much zurain and um, i see now few more comments coming from my viewers but uh, it's a bit of a time up right now what i'll suggest is everyone who's joined me in right now don't be disappointed i'm going to be saving this live in the pro beauty india igtv page uh, you would have a comment section there as well key in your questions we would be happy to you know have zurin respond to them in due course of time uh, once again thank you all my viewers for joining us for listening to us we hope this session helped each of you uh, in planning your way forward and in staying motivated in the current time uh, i am going to be seeing you all every tuesday uh, like i have been doing as part of the tuesday sundowner series and till i see you all next stay safe take care and like i always say continue beautifying yourselves at home or yes you can go to the salons now because they are back Uh, all open so take your safety precautions to be get vaccinated like zorian said and uh, yes uh, let's uh, live the new normal happily beautifully thank you so much for having me on board i really enjoyed being here and for everybody who i couldn't answer please feel free dm me i am always available for you and thank you yeah zorian maybe you just want to you know say your instagram page it, sorry it, it, i said thank you professional beauty india for this fabulous thing guys keep watching her every tuesday because she will bring the industry to you and there's loads of people that you can you know pour your heart out find out what you want it's a fabulous platform i will see thank you, you. Tuesday. <laughs> thank you so much just before you sign off if you could just you know uh, mention your instagram handle so that you if uh, my viewers want to studio and academy that's basically where you could find us on instagram 
perfect and like i said pro beauty india page continue following me so that you stay tuned with everything do not forget to download the recent edition of the magazine the link is in the bio and i will see you guys soon. till then okay sorin thank you so much yes, yes, thank see you, you sometime soon you guys bye take care bye bye